Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. Welcome back to the kitchen. We're cooking some supper tonight and we're gonna do cornbread attempt number three. So if you're new around here, we do grow about 80 to 90% of our own food. So we've been growing field corn for a couple of years now. And here lately, um, I got a cookbook when we went up uh, visited the Smoky Mountains and I've been trying out the cornbread recipes in this cookbook. So I've been making cornbread my whole life uh, to make a long story short, but most of the cornmeal you buy anymore is self-rising cornmeal. I know how to make it that way, but I've been struggling uh, some with the fresh cornmeal. So we're gonna see how this recipe turns out today. We're also gonna have some boiled backbone and ribs. I know a lot of people are like freaked out by boiled meat. My granny Patsy used to fix this uh, when I was a kid. It was always like the best thing ever and so i fix it this way too she was not actually my granny she was my great aunt but we i always called her granny patsy but anyways so i'm gonna go ahead and get these boiling i like for them to boil for about an hour makes a delicious broth too uh so we're gonna go ahead and get that going we're also gonna have i've got some leftover stewed potatoes we're ending the um near the end of the week so um I'm gonna throw in some leftover stewed potatoes that i made the other night so i'll warm up those and uh, probably some October beans. So let's get this started. A backbone is a delicious piece of meat. I'm just gonna tell you, I think anyway, it's one of my favorite pieces. See that big old chunk of meat there, which this one was messed up a little bit, so there's not much on that side of the bone, but these will be perfect for boiling. So I'm just gonna put them in my water. This will also make a delicious broth that I'll save, write the date on the jar, stick it in the fridge to use. Um, I mean, I use it like chicken broth and it's really good, so. We're gonna throw quite a bit of salt in here. May need to add just a little more water. Throw us a piece or two of garlic in there. Now I love the taste of rosemary and pork, so I went out there and grabbed me a few pieces of rosemary that'll cook in there with it too. Whilst that is cooking, I'm also gonna have some peach collar for dessert, so I'm gonna grab that out of the freezer. And I've got a pack of peaches. Perfect. And I've gotta go down to my grocery store and grab some October beans. I also grabbed a jar of lard. I'm out, used what I had last night. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our October beans opened up. You can see these siphoned a little bit, but they're still fine. Smell fine, look fine. That's just something that happens occasionally with beans. Um, if you wanna know the best way, if you wanna can beans, I do have a video floating around. I think it's a couple years old now, but um, I prefer to can the beans versus dry them because look here y'all, they already done. And I pretty much just gotta heat them up and season them. That's what I like about canning them. And if you've never tried October beans, you can see there, they're like a big bean, like a pinto. But I think honestly, and this takes a lot for me to say this because I love pintos, but I think they're actually a little better than pintos. They've got all kinds of different names, tapazio beans, cranberry beans. I've, there's some other names too, but I don't remember what they are. Um, but if you want to check those out, be sure to check out Hall's Tools. That's where we get our seeds from. And um, ever since we started buying those seeds from them, our plants have done excellent. We've had issues in the past with some others, but um, those seeds really have done good. So I'll be sure to link that if you want to buy you some October beans and try to grow you some because they are absolutely delicious. Put a little more water in there. I 
cooked some ham last night, so I'm gonna throw me a ham bone in there. That's just from our country ham there, and I like to cut the bones out and save them for occasions such as this. Um, I like to season my stuff with them. I'm gonna throw a little more salt in there. You can't have beans without salt. We all know that. And a little pepper. And I'm just gonna let them cook till we're ready to eat, pretty much. Um, Cause the longer they cook with that ham in there, the more seasoning they're gonna soak up. So, I'm gonna let them just simmer for a while. They don't. No. All right, now on to cornbread, y'all. My oven is about heated up. Um, so this is the cookbook I'm using. It's called Mountain Makings in the Smokies. I'll uh, be sure to drop a link to this cookbook and uh, you know, it does support the Great Smoky Mountains. So y'all be sure to check that out. It's got a lot of cool recipes in here. Um, I'm just trying a few of them here. But all right, so this one is called Smokies Cornbread and it doesn't have a name. The other two that I did had a name of whose recipe this is, but this one doesn't have a name. It's just called Smokies Cornbread. So it tells me to heat my oven to 425 degrees. It's almost there. Something different about this recipe is it uses butter instead of lard. So that's probably gonna be pretty good. We're gonna see here. First thing we're gonna do, this is my cornbread pan. That's all I cook in this pan is cornbread. Um, so that's just, I save this one for only cornbread. And most people have, around here anyway, have their like specific cornbread pan. And this is mine. So it's calling for a fourth of a cup of butter. That right there looks close enough. That's a chunk of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and let everything be getting hot while we're mixing our ingredients. All right, the first thing it says to do is beat two eggs. So we're gonna get these in here. And y'all just remember I'm following the recipe and the steps and everything that the recipe, recipe says. The next thing it says is a half a cup of sour milk. So uh, you could use butter milk here. I don't have any right now. So I put a little vinegar and a little regular milk to make it kind of a souring process. All right, so I'm gonna put that in there. And it says mix that together. Then it says add a tablespoon of sugar. Now I ain't one that cares for sugar, uh, make mostly in cornbread, but like I said, we're following the recipe and this one doesn't have nearly as much sugar as the last one called for and the last one was actually really good. Um, so next, half a teaspoon of salt. And a half a teaspoon of baking soda. All right, so we've got all that mixed together. Now, this is my, hmm, it's got a little silk in there. This is my fresh cornmeal here that I've milled and uh, sifted and everything. And it says to add to this, this is one and a half cups of cornmeal. And it says add a half a cup of flour. Half a cup of flour there. I'm actually gonna let this sit about 10 minutes before I pour it in my cornbread pan. All right, I've let it sit for a few minutes. I'm gonna get my hot pan out. Add melted butter. So that's what we're gonna do, because like I told y'all, it's following the recipe, okay? Actually, this is how I do my regular cornbread too, except I make it with lard, not with butter. So we're gonna pour our hot butter in there. 
We're gonna fold that in. All right, then into our hot pan. Tried to make quick work of this so my pan don't cool off too terribly much. So I'm gonna kind of even this out a little bit. And then in the oven we go. Now it says to let that cook for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna let it cook for 25 and then check it and go from there. Um, I just always like to start with the low end just so I don't burn it, just in case. All right, next thing we gotta do is get this cobbler started. So I'm gonna get my peaches in a little pan. We're gonna do, we're just gonna put a little water in it and a tablespoon of sugar. If you're using canned peaches, just skip this step right here. So I'm gonna heat that up. Yes, they are still a little bit froze. It's totally fine. All right, so like I said, got a little bit of water in there. I'm gonna put a little sugar by a tablespoon. You do the same thing if you're using fresh peaches. And we're gonna let them get thawed out, let that sugar melt a little bit. I don't care to can my peaches. I ain't never had a whole lot of good luck with them keeping real good. Um, so I just, I don't usually take up freezer space with stuff like this, but fruit kind of gets a pass because I have tried can it. Don't know what to do wrong, but I don't have great luck with it. Now let's get our stuff mixed up here. This is probably a recipe all of you've heard. My mama taught me how to make it this way. It is delicious. If you want to impress your people with a good old southern dessert that you made from scratch, peach cobbler, man, I'm telling you, is the easiest way to go. So we're going to need a cup of self-rising flour. Make sure you use self-rising or either make your own with the all-purpose, but uh, self-rising is the easiest way to go, and I seem to have the best results using self-rising flour, to be honest with you. All right, a cup of flour, a cup of sugar. A stick of butter, which is around a half of a cup melted. And a cup of milk. And that's my dinger for me to check on my cornbread. Look at there. Oh, that's pretty good, y'all. I'm gonna get this cobbler uh, stuff mixed up here and we'll get that out of the pan and see what it looks like. I'm gonna sit that right there. I'm just gonna leave my oven on 425. I've cooked cobbler anywhere from 350 to 425. Um, really, the biggest thing you look for is when the edges start uh, bubbling and looking all thick and syrupy. That's the best way I know how to explain it, though. So we're gonna get that mixed up. Now, this is all personal preference here. I like making them in my um, nine by 13 dish. I like a thinner cobbler. If you want it thick, like a thick bready cobbler, put it in eight by eight. I've done it both ways. We just prefer it this way. All right, while I'm waiting on my peaches to finish thawing out and everything, let's get this cornbread on the plate. So far, so good, y'all. Oh, it smells wonderful. Wonderful. I cannot wait to try it. My peach mixture is ready. So we've got, this is our flour mixture here. We're just gonna pour this kind of evenly. That was not even. That was a chunk of peaches. It'll be fine. Um, over our bread. And we ain't gonna stir this, okay? It's gonna go straight in the oven like that right there. And we will start checking on that at about the 20 minute mark. Um, of course, if you cook it in eight bait pan, it's gonna take it longer to get done. Just because it's more bread that's gotta cook. So it ain't gonna take as long where I stretch it out like that. But like I said, we like it thinner. I can't stand it. I'm gonna do a taste test on this bread. The 
inside looks good. Let's give it a taste. Maybe it ain't too hot. Mmm. 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 Mm. Boy. You can really taste the butter in there. And I love butter. Zero sweetness. Zero. Now that right there, my friends, that's a fine piece of cornbread. Oh, I can't wait for Andy to try it. Mmm. In my personal opinion, that right there is probably some of the best cornbread I've ever eaten. No lie. Even if I did make it. <laughs> that is the texture that I've been looking for. Throughout my ventures in the last couple of years of working with fresh cornmeal, <clears throat> that's it. That's the texture. That's what I've been looking for. 100%. Mm. All right, let's get through the rest of this supper done. Maybe I won't fill up on cornbread. <laughs> Our cobbler's been cooking now around 30 minutes. That is done enough for me. You can get it a little dunner if you want. But I found the dunner you get it, it, it almost gets chewy if you get it too done. So, I'll show you here. I like it to be brown around the edges. Like that right there. And that's when I pull it out. That's just personal preference. That's going to be delicious right there, y'all. Well, I got my plank fixed. Good looking piece of backbone and cornbread, October beans with a little chow chow and some stewed potatoes. Pintos, here I come. That's pretty good, ain't it? I thought so. I like that. I like that one in the very last one, the one you done before the best. Pintos are so good! That's some of the, that's a lot more like cornbread is supposed to be though. That's what I told him. That was the texture I was looking for. Yeah. That's a lot more like cornbread is supposed to be. Yep, I like that one. Pretty good. All good. All right, we're going to get to eating. <laughs> All right, time for a little dessert. I'll show you what this cobbler looks like. sure to be a hit at all your family functions. So if y'all try anything you saw today, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from y'all. And anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned a little something. And until we see y'all on the next one, y'all have a good one.